Welcome to the European Sport Congress podcast, where we discuss sport projects and priorities with amazing guests who are leading sport innovation. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe and to follow the European Sport Congress on social media. Joining us today, we have Javier Fernandes Rio, professor at the University of Oviedo, where he's also director of the Sport and Health Services. Javier started his career as a physical education teacher, a passion that turned out to be one of the major topics for his research, with hundreds of papers published and participation in over 20 books. Javier is regularly invited as a lecturer to international universities where he speaks about education, pedagogy, physical education, sports and health. And he's also the director of the Spanish Journal of Physical Education and Sports, the oldest journal on physical education in Spain. Javier, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you feeling? Uh, hi, Sofia. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for having me in, the, in this podcast. And uh, I'm feeling good. Feeling fine. Thank you. Great. It's an honor because you have so much experience, you have so much knowledge, but most of all, you have this practical knowledge about sport in academia. We've been talking a lot about research, but it's great to have this insight, this direct insight from the athletes and university athletes. And I'd like to start exactly by that. There is a very long tradition of sports in academia. It used to it used to focus on um athletes and it used to be a, a ramp for students to become professional athletes but nowadays we see that universities must offer sports services for the development of the students and staff well-being and personal development why do you think that sports and academia and universities are so intertwined well i think that uh, well it's not that i think it's research tell us that physical activity practice is uh, essential to balance the stress that academia brings to the students' lives. So it's like a counterbalance to this stressful life that we all live, and of course also the college or university students. And moreover, uh, research has also connected physical activity practice with better academic performance. So those individuals who perform physical activity regularly tend to have better grades or to achieve higher in academic settings. Now we all know that it's important for their success in universities. We know that sport and the sports services specifically are not limited to, well, the, the well-being and physical activity of students. There are also a lot of important topics that are connected to it, like sustainability and gender equality. And I know that, for instance, the University of Oviedo has a very strong initiatives and projects to promote gender equality in sports. How can sports services push these topics to the front line and to the debate? Yeah, I'll start with the second one. Um, gender equality uh, should be a, a key issue in any sports uh, service. Especially because, again, research tells us that girls drop out rate from a sport and physical activity practice is much, much higher than that from, from boys. Uh, therefore, uh, girls or women's uh, physical activity practice should be a concern for every every university and that's why there are specific programs and activities organized to try to change this negative trend for example in spain here in oviedo we have a, a, a personal defense uh, program uh, so, as I said, it's important to, for uh, gender equi equality, to try to find those areas where girls can have successful experiences uh, related to sport and to uh, go back to physical activity practice regularly. One of your major topics of, of research is education, pedagogy, and you focus a lot on gamification. And I've been through some of your books. They're very interesting because you have some great examples of how to use table games and traditional games to increase 
physical activity and healthy lifestyles. Why this, this, this need to search for new methodologies for education? How did it came to, came to be? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I, when I look back, I think that uh, everything began, everything started in, when I was a, a college student in my initial training. Because I, I always say that I was very lucky that my teachers wanted us to think about, to reflect on what we were doing. Well, first, uh, try to prepare and, and, and uh, try to, uh, to understand what's going on and find out, come out with uh, something that you, th you really think that fits uh, the needs of the people you're going to work with. But also, very important to reflect of what happens after you have done your job. What impact has what you do? And of course, how to make it better. And when I start teaching in, in, as a high school teacher, uh, I just kept doing the same thing. Uh, try to prepare, get ready for the class, uh, read, uh, listen and prepare, do uh, your job and then reflect on what you do. And then I moved to the university and, and well, I just kept doing the same thing. So it's, uh, yes, it, uh, I says, and, and I think that I've, I've been, I'm much better researcher now than I was 10 or 20 years ago. And just try to keep learning and keep trying to, to improve your, the way, the things you do. And also try to come out with uh, the right, or I would say methodologies or pedagogies that will help people uh, learn. Uh, or integrate the information that you want to convey uh, easier because there is no there is no single pedagogy or there's no single right methodology so uh, there is a right methodology or a right pedagogy for each person so we have to just try to uh, and also generations change um, also uh, uh, the, the, the the technology that that the kids or the or the students use is changing and of course we as teachers have to adapt and gamification gamification is another another methodology that that came out a few years ago and uh, i i like to explore new ideas and try to find new ways of helping my students like uh, the united nations just changed their their views on physical activity performance before it was just uh, well, you have to do 60 minutes of uh, moderate to vigorous physical activity and sport. And now they are saying that everything movement counts. That's it. It's okay. If you can go to the gym or and, and do or run some laps, that's fine. But if you can't, but if you walk a lot or the work you do at your house, at your garden, um, buying or moving things or that everything counts. Uh, so uh, taking care of the kids or cousins or whatever and walk them to the park or walk the dog, everything yeah. counts. It's just to be an active person or don't take the car everywhere. So it's a little changes that, that make a difference. Exactly. That's great to see that change because I feel like a few years ago, uh, physical education, where there were a lot of tips saying just move, take the stairs, whatever you can do. But then that kind of narrative shifted a bit and exercise only counted when we did one hour of intensive exercise. But now this shift again is great. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're totally right. I mean, sometimes forcing individuals to go into the gym or to do some kind of exercise who is, which is supposed to be really excellent for you and blah, 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 that doesn't help because it's not the right exercise for you. So when somebody asks me, uh, what is the best sport? What is the best physical activity? I would say the one that fits you and the one that is good for you, and the one that you will like to repeat. 
So it doesn't matter if I tell you that swimming is the best exercise if you don't like swimming or running. If you don't like running, it doesn't matter if, it's, if it says that you can burn, I don't know how many calories. Best exercise is the, the one that fits you, fits your needs, your, your available time, your way of living. It's just to, to, to try to connect both things, trying to make it a little bit more active. And that's it. And you're also very aware of all these new methodologies and all this new way of thinking about physical activity because you are also involved in a lot of projects, not just research, but actual intervene, inter, interference in society uh, about, for instance, PhysiEd, which is one of the projects that you will be presenting here, which is Physical Education Teachers Academy, where basically um, teachers gather to think about innovative ways to promote physical activity, correct? Well, in this case, it's more uh, focused on physical education. Um, at Physiate Academy, we are trying to understand what are the, what's called signature pedagogies that research has identified in physical education teacher education programs. There are certain pedagogies that, as I said, we call them signature that we believe are the right ones to train future physical education teachers. And at uh, this uh, Erasmus program, we're trying to agree on those ways of preparing future teachers and try to share a common language, a common vision on how to prepare future students, I mean, future teachers, sorry. Yeah. And so that they will, they will, they will teach physical education correctly to their future students. So um, yeah, just try to have a shared language, shared knowledge, and help each other develop. I would say, uh, good training programs to increase or or to uh, make better the physical education uh, classes. I mean, all over Europe, try to have a, a share language. A standard. What would you identify as the major trends and what are these new innovative methodologies that physical education teachers can adopt? Yeah, I would say that the major trend that now physical education is facing is try to promote uh, positive uh, experiences for all students. Because if you have a positive experience in physical education, you're going to probably become uh, more connected to physical activity practice outside the physical education class. So I would say that the, the main trend on, on, on research now is try to understand how we can develop and promote this positive experience for every student in the physical education class. This involves a lot of psychology as well. And I know that a lot of your studies involve sport psychology yeah. as well, right? Yeah, it deals with um, motivation. Well, I'm not motivated. I am an active person. I, I do physical activity, but I don't like swimming that much. So I'm not motivated by swimming. Um, oh, but so, you yeah, just made it's... a major hike in Chile this, this past days, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I like other sports, but... It, yeah, as I said, it's just uh, finding the, the, the type of physical activity that you are. But of course, that brings me back to physical education. If uh, teachers should experience different activities uh, and on a positive way. But if you have positive experiences in different uh, activities, then you will be able to have a good background sport, uh, or physical activity background, a positive background, and you will eventually uh, be connected to physical activity practice. And uh, so I would say that that's ma the major trend of research uh, and also the major challenge, trying to find, uh, trying to build positive experiences for all students, and that has to do with the pedagogy that we use, which is also connected to psychological issues like motivation, uh, basic psychological needs of students, 
and and uh, well the way and and maybe uh, the the type of classes that we build mm -hmm. the, to be to be connected to the students. Okay, and and you also focus a lot going back to the traditional games, for instance, the context in which a person um, is raised, the family, the community in which they they live in. So this is a very collaborative approach that I think you work on with. Why do you think it's so necessary to have the, all these topics, to have social social assistance, for instance, to have um, psychology, to have the family, to have everything involved, to push people to be more physically active? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I would say that we live in society. So uh, at, what, at what time you rely more on your parents? Then at what time, another time you rely more on your friends, then on your partner, then on your, so your life evolves and we, we are also connected with uh, life. And also one of the basic psychological needs, human basic psychological needs is the need for relatedness. We want to be connected to other people. So we need them to to make positive connections, to live a better life. And uh, if we want to help people uh, live a healthier or more active life, uh, you need to look at all these factors. Because some people are very intrinsically motivated. Like for example, when I go running, I just go by myself. Because I, I don't need anybody. But to go skiing, for example, I would never go by myself because I feel bored. I always want to go with, with friends or colleagues or whatever. So in this case, you need the support of those individuals to become physically active. That's why we must understand what are your needs. Maybe you need the support of your friends to go and be active. Maybe you need the support of your teachers, of your coach, of your parents. So those those all individuals are connected at what time, uh, uh, more or less at different uh, stages of your life, but you need all of them. And we as researchers need to understand all those areas, those elements to try to come out with the right answer to your needs. Exactly. So that leads me actually to my next question, which is about this community building and how all of these institutions and all of these entities should be involved and have to be involved in order to, to develop sports, either at a personal level or at the societal level. So when you do research, when you teach, when you are involved in projects, for instance, there are a lot of different communities involved. You have the athletes, you have the coaches, you have the project managers, the researchers. How is it to manage all of these people's interests and why is it so important to promote, I'm going to say positive, collaboration? <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. Mm. It's not an easy, ta an easy task, and it's not there is not an easy uh, answer. But I would say that, um, like Congress, like the European Congress that is going to be held in, in Gijón, uh, in, helps bring a, or at least connect all these different stakeholders. Um, I think it's a, ma it's a matter of um, organizing events, uh, but also. Uh, we as researchers, we must get out and meet the media. Uh, as I said, we have to make our ideas and findings available, visible and accessible, but not only for other colleagues that read our, um, our, our journals or our, or our papers or articles, but we need to uh, make Take another step and get closer to the practitioners. In this case, teachers or coaches or students and athletes. So uh, it's a question of, at the same time, the only way to connect individuals is like to organize events uh, at different levels. I mean, events for, for researchers, but also for teachers, 
or, or for make connecting both of them. But also uh, um, try to, as I say, uh, portray and, and, and come out and, and step out of our offices and, and talk to the media, uh, talk to the people who are uh, closer to uh, society and try to spread the word out and the findings and the ideas. So it's not easy, but but that's that's uh, that's the other that's our mission also. Yeah, of course, you're just touching. Sorry, but you're you're talking about one of my favorite topics, which is science communication and its <laughs> research communication, which is so essential. And you actually do it pretty pretty well. So obviously, you have access to journals and to a lot of research, but you're also in close contact with the community. I follow you on Twitter, and you're very very active on your communications and on your support, for instance, for for competition and for teams here from from Asturias. How would you say that? we can adapt and that we can improve these communication skills that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but I, yeah, I forgot uh, podcasts like yours, uh, Twitter, uh, I think it's a matter of, of trying to, uh, like, like, like many years ago, uh, scholars would just be in their offices and publishing papers. Uh, I think that now we understand that we must, as I said earlier, step out and connect with people like you, uh, because otherwise our our job, our work, work is incomplete. And and my my doctoral students or the two students that I work with, I push them to uh, to go out and work beyond the academia, uh, because we were we were raised just to publish papers. And, uh, and no, 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 that's not only the case anymore. Otherwise, uh, your work is incomplete. So it's, it's a, I would say that, that in the near future, it's, uh, the world is evolving so fast, and it's also academia, same thing. We have to get out, and uh, we have some colleagues, excellent researchers, but all, that also have podcasts that are very uh, active on the uh, sites. This also involves a collaborative approach because it's not only the researchers that have to understand that they have to come out of their little research cocoon, but also the media and the public needs to understand the importance of communicating with them and of uh, integrating them. Uh, we were just talking about this. You made a study recently about women chief editors in chief of sports journals in Spain, for instance. There is little research about this, but you made you made a study and you found out that only five out of the 21 sports uh, journals had women chief in editors, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think that we can change this? How can we learn it? Uh, well, sport and physical activity is a very male-dominated uh, field. Uh, I like to say that it's uh, slowly evolving, uh, probably very slow for some, uh, but uh, I just got back from my conference in Chile and, and, and there were many women there and they were brilliant. And uh, so, uh, of course, it's going slower than we would like to, but uh, I think, uh, they are getting the support or the support that they need or more support than before. Uh, so I guess uh, it's not uh, easy to say this, but it's just, I think that it's a matter of time that will eventually turn over. Um, but that's already just, great. For instance, that examples that you just gave that there were a lot of women speakers there. It's important to say that and to bring awareness that there are great women speakers in sport, for instance. We were just talking about including more people in sport and about how we can we can bring awareness to the importance of research and innovation in sport. And I think that one of the major barriers that we still face is bringing the actual athletes and coaches to understand the importance of this research and of this theoretical approach. How do you think that we can involve them and show them the importance of all this background work that it's done? Well, sometimes um, I think that uh, bringing athletes to, uh, to 
to read, to understand. Uh, when we try to, uh, we are researching on, because uh, sometimes we go and, and gather data from athletes and coaches, and we just take it to our laboratories or our computers, and we never go back to them to actually telling them what we found. I think that uh, nowadays uh, researchers understand that they need to, they, they, that they need the athletes, but they also must, they, they, they uh, have a debt with them to, to uh, as I said, convey or, or tell them what we have uh, found or we have uncovered uh, that can help them become better uh, performers. Same with coaches and with athletes. So as I said, uh, years ago, we just went in and out, but we never came back. Now I think that we are going back and we are trying to work in close relationship with athletes and coaches. And it's just, that's the only way to progress. Uh, researchers, athletes and coaches uh, together and share information for them, but also for others. Basically, it all comes down to communication and to having open channels for communication. You will be a speaker at the European Sport Congress, where we are very, very focused on increasing this communication, this networking collaboration opportunities. What are your expectations for the event? Well, the first time that I knew about this Congress, it was kind of like, well, another Congress. But uh, as soon as I start learning more about this Congress, I, I, I truly believe that it was going to be different, uh, kind of like a unique experience because uh, besides, of course, talking about sport and physical activity practice, I think one of the, also one of the main goals of, the, of, the, of this Congress is to help scholars and researchers understand, I think, the opportunities that the European Union, in this case, the Erasmus programs, hold and take advantage of them. It's just uh, learn how other scholars uh, 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 were able to uh, come out with uh, financial support with the, from, the, from the Erasmus programs. And that will help you try to build your own uh, idea and to build, uh, make it grow uh, enough to have uh, support, financial support for the European Union. And uh, so at the same, learn from others, but other, that have, have been successful before, but at the same time, connect with them and increase the, the, the networking, the, the, the network that we talked about earlier, because otherwise it's impossible to grow. Otherwise there is, there is no possibility. So, so I think that the, the European Sport Congress is going to be Besides talking about sport and physical activity, uh, the, the, the difference is going to be these, uh, these, you know, these Erasmus, pro, uh, Erasmus uh, programs, views and ideas that will help all of us uh, gain a better understanding of, of how to get financial support and also network with other people. I'm so happy that you mentioned, mentioned that because we have also just announced last week that we will have a live translation, for instance, from English to Spanish. So I hope that all the, the our Spanish stakeholders from sports federations and everything can attend and can learn about these European funding opportunities. Perfect. Yeah. That's Javier, good to say it again. Thank you so much for being here with us today and for giving all these insights about the importance of connected research to community of and of collaborative approach to increase physical activity. It was a pleasure hosting you and having this conversation. The European Sports Congress brings together stakeholders from all over Europe to showcase their work, connect with potential partners and learn from the experts. In this September and you can find all the information and register at www.sportcongress.eu.